It's fair to say that the crossover market is one of the most fiercely contested car segments in the world right now. It's all out war. And the king of that segment is the Nissan Qashqai. But like everyone else, Honda wants a piece of the action. And its weapon of choice is the brand new HRV. The previous HRV was okay, but challenging the Qashqai, that's like Wimpy setting up shop next to McDonald's or going to prison and punching the warden in the face. It's a risky move. Let's see if this thing has got what it takes. A closer look at the new HRV shows Honda isn't exactly bringing a knife to a gunfight. The new car is pretty damn gorgeous, certainly on a par with, if not better looking than its rivals. Honda's tried to make it as sleek and as coupe-like as possible, with a sloping windscreen, hidden rear door handles, and headlights that look as if they've been swept backwards by the wind. It's a balanced, well-proportioned car that's daring without being overly fussy. The HRV seems like a quality product on the inside as well. It's a Honda, so you wouldn't expect anything less. But it's not quite as good as Honda claim. When they first gave me the keys to this car, they told me it had lots of soft touch materials, but dashboards actually rock hard. They've actually tried to hide this in some places by using fabric on the doors, for example, but they're not fooling anyone. However, there are a few nice touches, including this lovely chrome finish on the center console and a very interesting touchscreen climate control system. Above this, you get the new Honda Connect infotainment system, which is standard on every HRV. This one runs Android, just like your mobile phone, and comes with a range of apps like a calendar, photo viewer, and streaming music services. The Honda HRV is physically smaller than a Nissan Qashqai on the outside, but on the inside, you actually get more room. The way that they've achieved that is by positioning the fuel tank underneath the two front seats, freeing up room in the rear. That means you get lots of headroom, lots of legroom, and an enormous boot. Plus, you also get Honda's magic seats. Check this out. The seat cushions can actually fold up giving you what they call tall mode, where you can accommodate tall objects, or you can fold the seats flat to give you a completely flat load bay. The all important boot, absolutely enormous. Just happen to have a couple of reasonable size suitcases and those fit absolutely no problem. I've also got a double buggy, but if I fold the seats flat and load that in, my imaginary twins can come along for the ride. Plus, the front seat actually folds back as well, so you can load objects as long as a surfboard if you really want to. So, so far, on practicality, the HRV is definitely winning. On the road, the Honda HRV drives pretty much how you'd expect it to. It feels as if Honda has put a lot of thought into making it easy and comfortable to operate. The driving position is pretty much spot on, the seats are very comfortable, the steering is light, the pedals are well positioned, and everything just feels like it should. The suspension is definitely tuned for comfort rather than sport. Right now we're out in Portugal and their roads are always super smooth, unlike the UK where things can get a bit rough, but for you guys I've been hunting out every single pothole I can find, and the ones that I have found, the HRV's dealt with with no problem whatsoever. In terms of refinement, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. On the motorway at 70 miles per hour, it's whisper quiet in here. They've added extra sound deadening material in here, so you can barely hear the noise of the road or the wind. On the flip side, the diesel engine in particular can feel a little bit gruff at times. Speaking of engines, the HRV comes with a choice, either 120 horsepower-ish 1.6 litre diesel or a 130-ish horsepower 1.5 litre petrol. I'm driving the diesel today and like I said, it doesn't feel especially refined, especially when you're driving really hard. In some diesel cars, you can barely tell that they're diesels, but in this, you can definitely say it's an oil burner. You can feel a certain amount of vibration through the pedals and if you're really paying attention to it, it can get a little bit distracting. On the plus side, the diesel does have a good amount of torque, 300 newton meters, so it gets out of its own way pretty damn quick. Expect 0 to 60 in around 10 seconds. As for transmissions, there are two options. You can get a six-speed manual, which is actually really good. The gear shift mechanism is really positive. It's pretty slick. Or you can go for the CBT gearbox if you weren't born with a gift of a left foot. Personally, I'd steer pretty clear of it unless you're desperate for an automatic. 
Ultimately, the new HRV is the surprise of the summer for me. The crossover market is incredibly saturated with some really good family cars, but this is up there with the best of them. For a lot of people, the Qashqai is quite rightly the benchmark, but the HRV not only stands up to it, matching it in many areas, but also surpasses it where practicality is concerned. All hail the new segment, King? Maybe so. This is the Fiat 500X, an extra large, extra spacious, and extra rugged version of the iconic Super Mini. It's Fiat's attempt at cashing in on the lucrative crossover market. So if you've ever wanted an extra large, extra spacious, and extra mean version of Fiat Super Mini, and wanted as 